Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name's Mojax and today we're going back into the streaming world, taking a look at a box which promises to be a kind of all-in-one solution for live streaming, whether that's at home or out on the road. It's the YOLO Box Pro. Firstly, some disclosure. YOLO Live, who make this product, sent it to me free of charge. Now, most of the gear I review is on loan. Some of it I do get to keep afterwards, but generally that's not relevant info, as the companies in the DJ industry who send me things know exactly who I am and that I will never pull any punches when it comes to telling you my opinions. That's always been the case, and it always will be. But I mention it here because if you watch other videos about the YOLO box line, you'll soon realise, as I did, that sending products out to YouTubers is the main way that the company markets their devices. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, I just want you to be aware of it. And crucially, not only did YOLO Live not try and dictate what I say or steer the direction of this video in any way, they also didn't even insist that I make a video at all. I could have just used it myself and never made any content about it. So if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have bothered. But you're watching this video now, so perhaps that's a spoiler. The YOLO Box Pro is a true all-in-one multicam live streaming box, taking care of both switching and encoding, with a touchscreen monitor to see what you're doing and for control. It's battery powered too. On a basic level, what this means is for a DJ is that you only need to connect up at least one HDMI or USB camera, hook up your mixer to the line input, and as long as you have an internet connection, you can stream from anywhere in up to 1080p resolution. But that's barely scratching the surface of what the YOLO Box Pro can do. It's not a cheap device, costing around $1,300 dollars in the US. But when you start to break down what it is capable of and what it could potentially replace, then that price starts to look rather reasonable. Up to now I've been using the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini line of switches for my streams. To get one of those which also encodes your streams, you'll need at least the A10 Mini Pro at $500. Then to really do any serious controlling of that, you'll need a computer. Name your own price for that. To preview your stream or do multi-view, you'll also need a monitor. Add at least another $100. And to feed pre-recorded video or animated overlays into an A10 setup, you'll either need that computer again or a $500 Hyperdeck Studio Mini. The Yolo Box Pro can play media rights from an SD card. The ATEMs also don't have any Wi-Fi support natively or the ability to use a SIM card for mobile data, and of course an ATEM rig will need power, there are no battery options available. This is certainly not me hating on ATEMs, I still think they are fantastic and will continue to use them for a lot of my streaming, but it does perhaps lessen the sticker shock of the YOLO Box Pro price when you start to compare the two. I guess the main difference is that the ATEM line is very much based around hardware. The hardware does the work and you can add in extra features and controls via software. But the YOLO box is about hardware and software. Fundamentally, the device is a tablet running on the Android kernel, and so it's effectively a very compact computer in itself. This could potentially be a concern when you're dealing with a company like YOLO Live, which is not exactly a household name, but they clearly know what they're doing. I have yet to encounter a single crash or glitch in the two months I've had the unit, and the rate that they roll out updates and new features is quite astounding. There have been at least three updates in that time, all of which added impressive new stuff. When it comes to hardware, the unit is not shabby either. It's based around an 8-inch LCD display, which has a brightness of 400 nits. Whilst that's not the brightest in the world, it is certainly usable in daylight. It's also a touchscreen and is nicely responsive. YOLO Live do supply an adhesive screen protector in the box, which does seem to reduce that responsiveness a little, but I choose to have that on there anyway as I do like that bit of extra protection. The body of the unit, whilst plastic, does feel nice and sturdy and has held up well to being used out and about. The rear panel has a kind of rubberized coating, which means it doesn't slide around when placed down on a flat surface. On top of the unit is where all the connectivity lives, and there is plenty of it. Firstly, you have three HDMI inputs, which can support up to a resolution of 1080p at 60fps. Next to that is a USB input, which can be used for webcams. I used the classic Logitech C920 with it, and it worked really well, although it doesn't look as good as higher quality HDMI cameras as you would expect. I also tried plugging a cheap generic HDMI to USB capture card into it and that worked just fine, so potentially you could run four HDMI sources into the box if you really needed to. There's an Ethernet port to connect via wired networking, although there are also wireless options which I'll talk about in a minute. Then there are the outputs, one HDMI output for monitoring and a USB Type-C. This has a couple of main uses, the first being connecting a USB drive to record onto, and the second is to feed the output to a computer as a webcam feed for OBS and the like. Then you're just using the YOLO Box Pro as a switcher. Next to that are the audio ports, all on 3.5mm jacks. There's a dedicated headphone output for monitoring audio, a mic input, and 
and the most crucial port for us DJs, a line input. This means that getting a clean signal from your DJ mixer is as simple as plugging in a cable from your master, booth or record output. Job done, zero fuss. The final port is another USB Type-C for power. This will obviously charge the internal battery, but the device is also quite happy running off the charger. One thing to note, the unit does require a quite specific power adapter to charge properly, one which supports the Quick Charge 3.0 standard. Power delivery ones like those that Apple use don't really do the trick. There is a suitable one supplied with the Yolo Box Pro of course, but it's worth keeping in mind should you need a replacement. Let's talk about the battery now, it's decent. In my testing I was getting over 3 hours when streaming from a full charge. For some DJs this will be plenty and for others not enough. The gigs where I usually stream are around 4 hours long, but I think that battery life is perfectly acceptable, especially considering that a battery that was any bigger would have also increased the size of the device itself, and from a convenience perspective just having a battery at all is awesome. Around the front you have the power button, a SIM card slot for streaming with mobile data and an SD card slot. The SD card can be used for recording as well as loading in elements like overlays and videos to add to your stream. There's also a standard quarter 20 thread mount for mounting the device vertically to a tripod or something like that. Moving on to the streaming options themselves, you have plenty. Obviously the preferred method will be via Ethernet, which is what I did at home and in the lab, but the Yolobox Pro does support 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi too, and that's what I've been using with great success at my gigs. The third option where you plug in a SIM card is a great backup. I tried it with the SIM card from my phone and it worked a treat, but it is only 4G not 5G, so you may find you're limited with bandwidth compared to the other methods. When it comes to streaming services, again the unit has all the options you should ever need. Defaults include Facebook, YouTube and the only one DJs generally require, Twitch. You can also stream to any custom RTMP server address too. What's even cooler is that YOLO Live include the ability to multi-stream to up to three destinations at once for free. You are streaming to YOLO Live servers so your bandwidth usage doesn't increase and then it forwards your stream onto the different platforms. Again, DJs are generally only streaming to Twitch nowadays, so it might not be much use to most of us, but it's incredibly neat that you do have that option at no cost. At this point I'll mention YOLO Live's own YOLO Cast service, but only briefly. It is quite expensive, starting at around $50 a month, but it does a lot of cool stuff like advanced multi-streaming for different platforms, RTMP ingest, cloud overlays, all kinds of things, but being completely honest, none of that is really of interest to me and I haven't felt the need to try it. It does look like a good option for some other types of users for sure, and you may want to check it out for yourself, but I'm good without it. I'll quickly discuss the audio mixer as it is important to us DJs. In short, it's really good as you'll see in the demo shortly, but I do need to mention my one major feature request. I'd love to see the ability to change the audio bitrate on the encoder. I haven't been able to work out what bitrate it's actually set to now, but although it sounds good, at least none of my viewers have had negative things to say about the quality, Twitch does support 320k nowadays and I'd like the option to choose that for my streams. Otherwise, honestly, I think the audio mixer is spot on. At this point I'm going to cut to a real time demo of the Yolo Box Pro which I shot in the lab. It's very long so if you just want to get my final thoughts about the product skip forward to the penultimate chapter here on YouTube. Okay so I'm going to demonstrate putting a live stream together using the Yolo Box Pro. I hope this is not too complicated for you. It's pretty complicated for me. I've got two computers running. I have three different things recording. Uh, it's going to be a whole thing but I'm sure we can get through it. So let's create a live stream. Just going to call it demo. Bear in mind I'm doing everything on the touch screen on the Yolo Box Pro. I'm not going to do description or anything. It's important to remember when you're doing Twitch that the title you put in for your live stream, that will be fed to Twitch. I made the mistake early on of just putting something random in there. And then when I went live on Twitch, my that title was the title of my stream. So you'd have to change it afterwards or whatever. So make sure you put the correct title in there. So now we have that. We can see in my other previous streams we've got below lots in there but let's go in now and up will come our different video inputs so we've got hdmi 1 which is me hdmi 2 which is the overhead view hdmi 3 which is my computer running obs with a green background we'll be doing some green screen in a minute and then we have the usb that's the logitech c920 down there which is just plugged in not as good as an hdmi you know decent quality mirrorless camera or something but it's a great addition for sure you know you may have a spare webcam hanging around that you want to make use of and well there it is it, it works well as you can see so one thing to point out the previews on the yellow box pro aren't necessarily like up to full kind of res and speed all the time so if you see any glitching it's not in the output it is in the 
actual inside the preview that you're seeing. So it doesn't always look completely perfect on the preview screen, but in general, it is kind of perfect. You know, it looks great on the actual output. So let's go in. First of all, we're gonna do the overlays. I'll show you those. So overlays here, we have lots that I've used in the past. This is a full screen one when I was on the Soul Train Raid Train. We just pop that in and out. We have, these are transparent PNG files I've just put onto the SD card inside the Yolo Box Pro. So we go full screen there. We can see we've got the venue logo, we've got my logo in the corner. And that was when I was doing an IRL, you know, at a gig. Then we have a, a lower third thing for Soul Train. Again, just pops up. Transparent PNG. You know, if you've been doing any streaming, you know how to work with those by now. Nice and straightforward, no problem at all. So that's your overlays there. We can add different types of overlay as well. So we have lower thirds. We can create these right there on the Yolo Box Pro. Then we can also add in a countdown timer, for example. So let's throw that on there. We can change the length of time. We can change the font, the colors, all of this kind of stuff. Let's just throw that on there. So there's my countdown timer. So all of this stuff is just, it's there. It's inside the unit. You know, I didn't have to add these in or anything. They were just there. They're part of the system, which is great. You can have titles as well. Um, all of this is, is very straightforward to use. Very simple indeed. And then social overlays as well. You can do, you see you've got the logo for your Instagram, Facebook, etc. All of those you can just throw up as and when you want. So very, very nice how easy they are to use. Now we move on to connecting. So these are your platforms that you're using. Now, of course, I am just using Twitch and I've connected my Twitch right there. We just swipe across. So I had to log in on here. Um, once I've done that once, I've never had to do it again. I've just logged in once. You can do custom RTMPs, etc. We'll talk about that separately. But so for my purposes, I'm just going to, I would swipe Twitch and, and turn that on, but I'm not doing that right now. Then we can invite guests. That's another feature we don't need to talk about at the moment. Audio, of course, very important through a DJ stream. I've got the Rain 70 A track edition is connected in via the line input. Very simple, no fussing around with that at all. Program is the obviously the master output volume and audio follows video. So that will switch the audio when you change your video source, which we generally don't want as DJs. You will want it for other purposes, but not as DJs. Monitor just gives you the monitor levels on the screen or not and the hdmi we don't want that because that's camera one so we don't want the input from that and we don't want hdmi 2 or hdmi 3 but we do want the line in so line in is there and let's go back up make sure we're connected so line in i'm going to turn on and now you can see the audio is coming in on the vu meters there from me, oh, that's the line in. I'm gonna put a little delay on that because my HDMI cameras do have a little bit of a delay. I normally dial that into around seven or eight milliseconds and that syncs up my audio and video perfectly. USB audio as well, that's obviously coming from the webcam. So we could have webcam audio coming in. You know, you can have as many things as you want, but typically as DJs, we're working with a mixer. That's the main input. That's what we're working with. We don't need any other audio inputs going on. So that's my audio basically dial. I've got music coming in. My mic is going through the DJ mixer. And it's all just running completely smooth. And as I say, that's always my thing with this Yolo Box Pro from the beginning. It's like, does it do a line input? Does it work with that well? And it does. It just works fine. And that is crucial for a DJ stream. You know, clean, direct line input audio. We can't work without that. Simple. So, yeah, it works beautifully. So that's covered. We don't need to worry about that anymore. Then we have a scoreboard thing, not really relevant for DJing. Comments, now the comments do now pop up with Twitch as well. So if you can put, I'll show an example on screen right now. You can just click on the, a comment and it will appear on the screen until you tap it and make it go away. That's really nice. That's something I can't do with my ATEMs and I've always wanted to be able to do that and I can't, so that's lovely. Then we have the uh, auto switch. We'll look at that in a moment once we've got our sources set up. Then we have all the settings in there. None of these we need to worry about when we're actually doing a stream apart from the encoding setting, I will typically, obviously I'll adjust that depending on where I am. If I'm here in the lab, I'll set that to 6,000K BPS. And if I'm out in the field, I'll typically leave it at 3,000. But again, this is something you can just tweak and work around with. So let's get back to sources. Okay, sources are, are the next thing that we want to look at. We have those four sources right now. Let's sort out our green screen before we go any further. So right now, HDMI 3, that is a green screen, right? It's got the uh, now playing two track information at the bottom and a color bar that I've set. This is for, coming from OBS. 
Um, if you're in the field, you probably won't want this, but if you're in the studio, yeah, you may well want some green screen action going on. So let me show you how you do a green screen. So I'm going to click on the button there, keying switch, color type green, and I've used a default you know, green color. You can do green or blue. You can adjust the similarity and the smoothness to make it look exactly as you want. You can dial it in uh, for your chroma key settings. And then we are going to, that's done. So as you can see now, there is nothing on the screen apart from, if I go full screen, we've just got the black bar at the bottom and we've got our track ID information. So how do we get that onto another source? Well, let's choose HDMI 1. There it is. We want to put that over the top. So we're going to add a video source. We're going to go to picture in picture video. I'm going to choose HDMI 1 as my main screen. I'm going to choose HDMI 3 as my sub screen. And I'm going to scale it to, I'm going to turn off the border and I'm going to scale it right up and done and now so if i hit picture and picture video and go full screen we have my camera view and we have the overlay down below and i have that with stream elements notifications popping up as well from obs it's all there on that green screen looks great works really well very very simple to do you will need to tweak you know the settings a little bit depending if you're doing a live green screen with an actual physical green screen behind you you might need to tweak stuff but yeah on the whole that just works incredibly straightforward and we can add another one as well. So let's do that. So I'm going to picture and picture. We've got two of those to choose from. So I'm going to choose HDMI 2. That's my other one. And then the sub screen, I'm going to choose HDMI 3 again. And again, turn off the border, make it full screen. Done. And so now picture and picture video 2 is my overhead camera with the overlay on top of that as well with a green screen going on. This is very, you can see how simple it is to do. And I can switch between those and I've still got my overlay is going to stay on both of those. So if I wanted to do uh, now an auto switch, which is something that, you know, when you're DJing, you don't necessarily want to be changing camera angles all the time. Let's go in and do an auto switch. So I can choose my sources. So let's go for picture and picture video one and two. And then I'm going to choose how long each one's on the screen. So let's just do 10 seconds for now. We can have them loop. If you have multiple sources, you can have them you know, in, in different orders, you know, random order as well as sequential. So let's just get that started and I'll show you what that looks like. So now we are auto switching. I'll go full screen. And I'm going to start recording now on the Yolo Box Pro so that you can actually get an idea of what the output's looking like. So now every 10 seconds that is going to change to the next, there you go, back and forth. And I still got my overlay on there. And again, I can still have my actual overlays you know my image overlays etc so let's choose my main logo one there put that on the top go full screen and that will stay across the two different camera views so we're going back and forth with everything i need on the screen and i've told the audio not to follow the video so it is just going straight through and the audio is continuing without any switching going on this is it's just so easy to use now I want to show you something else we can do with video sources because there are more there. So I've deleted those picture in pictures for now. Um, we're going to add a new source so we can add in local video. So let's do that. We're going to choose a local video. This is stuff that I've just dragged onto the SD card, um, just MP4 files. So this is the uh, trailer for the Chauvet DJ review that I did last episode. And then let's go back to the audio local video one now i can have the audio on or off so i would choose to have that switch on if you just want to go you know cut to some graphics or something like that you, you can just switch over to that but i'm going to hit that now chauvet dj are one of the biggest names in lighting partly because they're always innovating new concepts which are designed to make djs lives easier on the new episode of beat source and you should be hearing the audio from that when i had that turned on now turn allows one central unit the gig bar move plus ils but let's go back in we can choose so we can do the settings on that so video card so this is the options we have we can have it continue playing when you switch over so it'll just carry on playing through so if you've got like a visuals loop that you just want to switch to and have it you know not not restart every time you can do that you can have it resume first frame and then pause when switching over or pause when switching so it'll just pause where it is so if i want to go back out let's go i'm going to have it resume first frame and pause when switching so i'm going to go back to hdmi one then I go back to my video. It's going to start from the beginning again. Same here, back. It's going to start from the beginning, or I can have it continue playing. So now it will carry on from where it was when we switch back. It's still playing in the background. 
So again, if you want to run, you know, trailers for stuff, you know, for future shows, or you just want to have some cool graphics coming up, you can have those playing and use them as a video source. It works really, really nicely. Now we have other options as well. We can add in a live stream from elsewhere when you've got the YOLO um, account set up and everything else when you're doing that, the YOLO live thing. I, I don't do that. Um, you may want to get involved with that and, and do it yourself, but I don't. Uh, you can have a PDF file, so you can put a PDF file up on the screen. It doesn't have to be an image necessarily. And we can do split view. So we can have split view, HDMI 1, and then split that with HDMI 2. And then we can adjust, we can have a border and or not. We can adjust the position of the separator, so where, where we want it to be. We can do the direction of it. We can center or not. We can swap the video left and right. So as you can see, just very, very slick in the way that you can work with all of this stuff. Done. So now we've got a split view. I can switch to that one as my main source. And there it is. All the time, my audio is playing through as it was originally. You know, this is, it's just dead easy to use. And it's all just done with this touch screen. There's nothing... You know, this this is as far as I've gone with it in my live streams. I haven't gone in any further than these features that we're talking about here. Um, you can go much deeper. And if you're doing other types of streams, there's lots more in there that will be of use to you. But for me, this is all I've needed to do. Generally, when I perform with this thing at a live gig, I've got one, maybe two GoPros. I've got the line input. I'm connected to Wi-Fi for the, or for the, uh, the, the actual connection. And it just goes straight to Twitch and it works. And then I keep up with the Twitch chat on my phone, you know, and that's it. Job done. You are streaming live. Um, you could even just do that with one webcam. You don't even need to have a, a GoPro or an, an HDMI camera. You could just do it with a webcam. This stuff is just very straightforward. I hope you understand, you know, it's been complicated for me trying to work out what's going where and, and so on. But for you watching this, I hope you get the idea that just how straightforward this is to do. Again, you don't have to even stream. You can just record. So you can record yourself as well and if you need to want to record like a routine video or something with that auto switching again no editing required afterwards it's all in there and i just think it's it's a great solution from that point of view so yeah back to mojax in the studio hopefully that's all given you a flavor of how easy it is to get the yolo box pro up and running so let me now break down my overall thoughts Despite the huge length of this video, I still feel like I've barely scratched the surface of many features of the Yolo Box Pro. I was about to list all of the cool features I hadn't covered in the video, and when checking those, I see yet another update has dropped on the day I'm recording this, version 3.0.0, which brings with it the ability to save all aspects of your layouts, animated video backgrounds, a new presentation layout, and more. That's on top of the remote guests feature, the ability to switch up to 10 sources, and even instant replay, which were all added recently. Recently. There's just so much that this thing can do. As much as I do love my A10 Mini setups, they really don't work for me as a portable solution for streaming IRL at gigs. Aside from the power requirements, you really will need at least a computer to actually utilize a lot of the advanced features. I've also reviewed the Mevo Start camera, and that's excellent too, and does beat the YOLO box when it comes to portability in pure size terms. But it doesn't have anything like the number of features which the YOLO box Pro does, and even things like overlays are stuck behind a paywall. What the YOLO box Pro brings to the table is all the power of my ATEM rigs and in a number of respects even more functions while still remaining entirely portable. And you don't need a computer to access the more advanced stuff like you do with an ATEM, it's all in the box. YOLO Live do have some other more affordable products in their line, the older regular YOLO Box and the YOLO Box Mini, and I've checked out the specs and features, and whilst they do seem decent, I do think the power and additional features of the Pro will be worth it for most DJs. Let's be real, if you're still in the streaming game now in late 2022, you are no longer doing it casually, you're in it deep. And I think for that kind of DJ, the YOLO Box Pro represents a great investment. So there you go, my thoughts on the Yolo Box Pro. This thing has absolutely smashed my expectations out of the park. I was a bit trepidatious when it arrived. It's like, well, it's a company I don't really know. It's a product I don't know much about, but it's absolutely killer. Like it really is. It does such a great job. Yes, in the studio. Yes, at home. But of course, the real prime application for this device is those IRL live streams at gigs, which I was trying to find a solution for. I wanted to do that but it was proving to be tricky. The various things I tried just weren't quite working out and the Yolo Box Pro just walks in the door and just goes, yeah, here you go. 
Live streams on the move, done. One camera, Yellow Box Pro, line in from the mixer, and you're off to the races. That, for me, is so impressive. Yeah, it's not cheap, right? It's an expensive device compared to some other options out there, but it does the job it's supposed to do. And I think this is a device for those of you who know that you're into that streaming life. You're going to be doing it for a long time. Maybe you're making a few bucks from it and you want to invest into those real life streams. Yeah, I think you can't really go wrong with the Yellow Box Pro. It has impressed me way, way more than I expected it to. In the comments this week, I'd love to hear from you guys and girls about your experiences doing live streams from gigs. Yeah, we were all doing them at home back in 2020 and 2021, but now we've opened back up again. Are you live streaming from gigs? If so, what kind of solutions do you use in terms of tech and how do you find it impacts on your performance, whether on the stream or at the gig itself? Do let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.